our gin rate. This is a lot of the days are actually. Okay. What's up guys? So today we're actually going to be pulling in the GitHub repositories based on the access that we just gave to them from those deploy SSH keys. So super exciting. The only problem so far with this morning is I have no coffee. So that's why we're here. Hmm. Where is the coffee? Ah, here we go. Okay. We've been hitting these guys up a lot recently. They've been really good. I don't know if I want to branch out. Big choices, big choices. I think. We haven't done the Classico, so that could be a go this morning. Thank you. Have a good day. Plan for today is we're gonna crack into some work from home. We're gonna make some coffee, we're gonna have some breakfast. Then we're gonna head out to a cafe later on, do some remote work. And I've got a new Wi-Fi laptop cafe in, I think it's Soho we're gonna head to. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a big one today. Let's go. Oh, good morning. Hello. What have we got? What is it? Does it smell good? All right, this is the stuff. coffee we need to have a little chat about someone new in the space and his name is Devin okay so hear me out Devin AI is impressive it is a code AI pilot that can essentially build full stack applications from basic prompts I understand where everyone's coming from when they're getting worried about it now when it comes to actually building production grade applications that ship out into the real world and to real users there's a big difference when it comes to building and shipping yes AI and Devon and Microsoft's GitHub Copilot and all these beautiful tools can write code. As developers, we use this all day, every day. I know I do. At what point do you call up Devon and say, yo dude, the backend server's down. I have absolutely no idea why. Can you just like come on over and fix it? This is where AI is lacking right now. Where is the tech support? Where is the, hey, this is the bug and these are the issues that are going on right now. I'm gonna solve them. Let me just push up a PR. Let's get it peer reviewed and push it right in. I don't don't see that happening anytime soon like how is it supposed to critically think and figure out what the problem is and sure there's gonna be people working on this and that's really admirable and I'm all about advancing tech but as far as actually trusting this thing to build full stack applications that scale and also when they break be able to fix it by itself it's not quite there yet so that's my first point when it comes to Devon and actually replacing jobs for software engineers the second point that I have though comes when they originally replaced farming manual work with the you can imagine everyone everywhere in the world got really really worried because thousands and thousands and thousands of jobs were getting deleted because the tractor just turned up the thing that happened with the tractor though is people started buying tractors all of a sudden they needed tractor diesel mechanics and they needed people that fitted new tractor tires and they needed people that serviced the tractors and all of a sudden people that sold the tractors and wholesaled them around the world and then new people started designing new tractors that did different things and harvesting different types of grain and, and all sorts of things I kind of see a similar analogy playing out out in the software development field where everything that we know now as devs is really really cool and we can obviously work really fast and work really hard and make really really cool things but it's okay for things to change in my opinion it's really just all about embracing it and actually using it to your advantage
All right, so it's been a good few hours, made some really, really good progress. Something that I've come up against though is generating the SSH deploy keys and having kind of like an optional config is actually a little bit harder than I expected it would be. The way that you normally generate SSH keys is you do it in like a terminal and one of the most common use cases would be for when you're actually setting up your SSH authentication for yourself with GitHub and your IDE. So like VS Code and the device that you use so that you can actually push code with authentication to the cloud. The problem I've got right now is I'm trying to execute terminal commands inside my Node.js instance. And so yes, there are ways to do this like using XS Async and like a few other different resources. But for step-by-step -step processes like executing and creating an SSH key and then you've got to move to the next step like then create a password and then you've got to choose the file directory. Like there's a few different steps that I kind of almost have to pre-plan ahead, especially when I'm actually hosting this project up in the cloud. There needs to be like a dedicated directory that almost like creates itself and deletes because I don't want to be storing stuff up there at all. It almost just needs to be like temporary local storage and then it just deletes itself. Anyway, there's a few things I've got to figure out right there. Otherwise, we've got a podcast going. We've got the, uh, the floor set up, as you can see, beautiful. Hear me snoring. All right, anyway, we're gonna keep moving forward. I'm gonna keep coding. Hope you guys are having a great day. And if you're a developer, make sure you subscribe. Hell yeah, okay. We successfully just generated an SSH key for two individual repositories, one each. We've got it working. So that's great news. That means we can move on to actually sending that up to the cloud, into the GitHub API. Man, we're actually making progress. My code's looking pretty tidy. This is literally the entire service in itself. We've literally just got get GitHub user repositories, which is, oh my gosh, it's spelled respiratory. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna change that. Uh, we've got our generate SSH key with some just default values, which I'm gonna change completely completely. Currently it's just like test at email.com and a directory path. And then we've just got an import GitHub repository service function, which just takes an array of repositories, uh, the access token for the user, so we can actually send that up to GitHub. We're making moves. We actually have SSH keys generated We've got them saved temporarily in like an OS storage bucket. So then they're deleted like right away as soon as they're returned. Obviously we don't get that secret. We only get the public key sent up and then I can't even touch it anymore. So yeah, great progress. At this stage, I think I'm gonna head out. Let's go get some coffee. Okay, so change of plans, ended up at a VC office, once again, talking about apps I'm building, apps I wanna build, things that could happen over the next few months. So some pretty crazy conversations for sure, but more to be revealed over the next few months to you guys. I think what I'm gonna do, now that I've had that huge chat, I'm gonna head home, I'm gonna spend some time with Maddie and Hermie, and we're gonna code from home. So let's go do that. Whew, what a day. Man, New York City. Springs turning up.
I do just want to preface as well that sometimes the dev vlogs are not just going to be all talk and play. A lot of the days are actually just me like getting drilled in and super focused and just building. I think sometimes I can make it look really glamorous because I'm like going and working from different cafes and I'm talking about all these people I'm meeting and projects that I'm doing and changes that I'm making to builds and such. But like a lot of it really is just me just like getting super deep in my computer and just focusing like all day. In saying that, I love the deep focus state that I can get into and I think just overall it's a creative outlet for me. I hope that makes sense. If you're wondering why sometimes I'm just not really talking much about what I'm doing, it's because I'm just doing it. There's also a couple of things that I need to address that like so many people comment every video. Number one, my theme on VS Code is Night Owl. Go use it, it's freaking awesome. Number two, yes, I do have my file browser on the right hand side. Marco, I'm talking to you. I do have it on the right hand side and it's because it's cool. It makes a lot of sense. I've got my code on the left and I've got my file browser on the right. Even in cases like this, look, all my code's right here and then my file browser's down this side. I love it, I think it makes sense. Anyway, those are two of the top comments that I see. Otherwise, thank you everyone for all the support you give on the channel. Maddie and I just like loving growing this thing and like making it huge. We actually have some plans for like additional future content that's not code related to come out eventually over the next like six months to a year and beyond. Like there's so many cool things that we can do from here. Actually just from like a creator point of view, seeing YouTube grow after we've kind of like dedicated a whole lot of time and energy into like the videos and posting way more. It's super inspiring for us and hopefully encouraging for you guys to see as well that you can go from nothing into something. It's just another place that we're building and having fun. I'm glad that you guys are here along for the ride. Now I'm gonna get back to coding. Okay, 